On Crime Watch tonight, love scams that target single women and Indonesian lottery scams. Welcome to Crime Watch. I'm ASP Jessica Ang. Scams. Many are still falling victims to scams. And with the internet becoming more and more readily accessible today, online scams are also becoming increasingly common ploys used by criminals. In particular, there's an increase in the number of internet love scams. In the first 10 months of the year, there were 12 cases reported, an increase compared to 11 for 2009 and 7 for 2008. Mary Tan, not a real name, was one victim. She was cheated of $200,000. Despite the painful experience and memories, Mary agreed to share her story on Crime Watch. Her wish in doing so is to let others learn from what she had gone through. Mary Tan was fast approaching 40. For years, she'd been looking for her Mr. Right. She decided to register herself in a popular international online dating site. The site promised scientifically tested personality tests that would help her find the love of her life. Mary received several responses to her postings. There was even a man who blatantly asked for money. She sensed that it was a scam and immediately struck him off her list. Eventually, someone by the name of James Peter White caught her attention. Hey Mary, I'm James. We seem to have a lot in common. I'd like to get to know you better. Nice to hear from you. What do you do? I'm an American diplomat stationed in London. I'm single with a very understanding teenage daughter. What began as a simple introduction soon developed and grew over the months into a very special relationship for Mary. The couple began exchanging personal emails and phone numbers. Me? Mm, yeah, sometimes I play golf. Nah, but I'm not really good at it. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm actually pretty good at it. I'll teach you. Mary believed the relationship had progressed beyond friendship. It had blossomed in her mind into romance. Irene, you know what? Yes. I found him, Mr. Wright. Really? Hmm? I met him through the dating site. Okay. He's an American staying in London. Are you sure? This Westerner never wanted to settle down, no? No, that's not true. In fact, we discussed about visiting each other. We talk every day and um, we have so much in common. <sighs> Hi. Hey, sweetie, how you doing? Good. About a year after they first met online, James made his move. My friend wants me to help him in some property business um, in Singapore. And I told him my girlfriend is in Singapore and she can ensure the funds are transferred properly before starting the investment. So how do you want me to help? My friend has five million pounds in a trust fund. So I was wondering if you could open an account in your name in the UK so my friend can transfer the funds into your account. Then you can transfer the funds from your account to Singapore. Why can't your friend just transfer the money into your account? It, it's held in some trust account um, and, and it has to be transferred outside the country. It's not some illegal money, right? Mary, I'm an American diplomat living in London. If I'm caught with illegal money, it's the end of my career. Besides, once the money is in Singapore, I'll have to come over and get it, right? I need you to help me find out which area of Singapore is good for property investment. James, it's a lot of money. Give me some time to think about it. Of course, sweetheart, of course. I love you. Mary was not very comfortable and pondered the request for some time, asking James a barrage of questions before she finally agreed to help. Hello. Hi, darling, how are you? Hi, James. So, have you decided if you're going to help me? It cost me a lot of money. I, I think there's just a, a, a small cost to transfer the money, but it, it, it's not that much at all. Okay, James, I'll do it. Oh, that is great. I'll get the 
send a bank officer of the uh, great Wales Trust Bank to get in touch with you. Her name is Mrs. Sarah Woolwine. Dear Mary Tan, a setup fee of £600 is required. You can send the money using Western Union using the name and identification given below. Although it was peculiar that the Great Wales Trust Bank had asked Mary to transfer the £600 through Western Union instead of directly to the bank, Mary did as she was told. A few days later, she got an email with her account number and a PIN. Hi, James. Okay, my account is up. Oh, great. Okay. Send me the bank account number and I'll get my friend to transfer the five million as soon as possible. Okay, will do. Two days later, James contacted Mary and informed her that the five million pounds had been transferred. All right, let me check if the money is there. James told Mary all she had to do was transfer the five million pounds to her Singapore account. But she couldn't. She was asked to contact Sarah from the bank for assistance. Dear Mary, please note that in order to transfer your funds, a cost of transfer security code is required. The fee for this code is £12,600. Hi James. Now I got this email from Sarah and it says that I have to pay for this transfer security code. It's £12,600. We need to pay this to get this money transferred. Why can't we just deduct it from the trust fund? I do not have so much money. No, 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 no we can't. Th that's why it's a trust fund. It, it can't be touched until it's successfully transferred out of the trust Mary fund. Mary was reluctant to transfer the money. But James managed to convince her that once the payment was made, the money would be transferred. Mary finally decided to do as James told her to. Again, Sarah from the Great Wales Trust Bank told her to transfer the money through Western Union. £2,000 limit per person through Western Union. I'm going to have to give you eight names to send to. These eight people are employees from the bank's account department. Mary did as she was told. She withdrew money from a fixed deposit account and transferred the £600 to eight different people through Western Union. Mary was then sent another security code, which she duly entered. What's going on? Straight and angry, Mary emailed Sarah. And the reply? I'm sorry, Mary. You will require a non-residential tax code since you're a non-resident. Cost of this code is £28,900. Another court? Why so many courts? James, what, what is going on? Okay, first there's this transfer court. Now there's this non-residential court. I'm not going to pay any more money to the bank. I know. This tax was imposed by another department of the bank. The foreign department. Let me see if I can raise the money on my end and pay for it. Okay, okay. I sold my car, Mary. 9,000 pounds. They need another 28,900 pounds. In fact, I already bought a plane ticket to Singapore, Mary, to come and see you. I can't wait to meet you in person. Hi. I don't think you should come yet. Hasn't been I'll see if I can raise the rest. Mary believed James and he transferred over the balance amount of £19,900. And then, somewhat nervously, she waited. Not again! <sighs> Mary emailed Sarah again. Sorry, Mary, but there is another fee required. The currency transaction tax. I am fed up with these taxes and codes myself, Mary. Trust me. I assure you it will work, Mary. Trust me. Once the five million pounds is transferred, I will pay you more than you paid. This will... After thinking it through, Mary relented and sent the 17,910 pounds, and as usual, she received another code. Singapore. 
Okay, I'll let you know once I see the money in my Singapore account. I think that should happen tomorrow. Fantastic. I can't wait to see you. Yeah, I can't wait to see you too. After the break, a shocking truth awaits Mary. After paying £51,010 in various fees, Mary finally received a message saying the £5 million had been transferred to her Singapore account. However, the money didn't show up in her account the next day, nor the day after. Mary decided to check with Sarah. I'm sorry, but this is beyond our bank here. This is a Singapore problem. The Monetary Authority of Singapore requires you to pay a security deposit. What? Pay again? I'm sorry, but this is a bank requirement from the Singapore MAS, not from London. How much is this deposit? £79,000. What? So much? Why so much? I can't help you there. This is a Singapore banking requirement. As it was a weekend, Mary couldn't check with the MAS to see if she indeed had to pay such a security deposit. In the meanwhile, James caught hold of her. Mary. I managed to borrow 21,000 pounds from a local loan shark. And my lawyer lent me another 20,000 pounds. But I'm still short about 38,000 pounds. Can you help me with the other 38,000? James, please tell me the truth. This is not a scam, right? How can you not trust me? Don't you love me? I really care about you. And I've done so much for you. I'm hurt, Mary. How can you even believe that I'm lying to you? By now, Mary had exhausted all her financial resources. She decided to approach a few of her friends for money. Mary managed to borrow 38,000 pounds. But upon receipt of this, Sarah asked for another 12,300 pounds for a transfer certificate. By this time, Mary became obsessed with paying the money as she felt that was the only way she could get her money back. Listen, Mary, this guy is cheating you. I'm not going to lend you any more money. You don't understand. Why is everyone saying this? Then what should I do? After talking it through with her friend, Mary decided to do some checks, something she realized she should have done at the beginning. She called the main bank, the Bank of Clydesdale, of which the Great Wales Trust Bank was said to be a branch. Um, hello, is this the Bank of Clydesdale? Yes, I'd like to inquire about this um, Mrs. Sarah Woolwine. I've been sending her money through the transfers um, the past few weeks. We've had several calls about the same thing, and we advise you not to make any money transfers, as it is most likely to be a scam. Thank you. About a month after she opened her UK account, Mary Tan filed a police report. The police report was subsequently handed over to the Ang Mo Kyo Police Division for investigation. We have managed to trace all the IP addresses made from the emails and the correspondences between you and the subject. Uh, it's actually from Nigeria, not London, as you had claimed before. Nigeria? That's right, from Nigeria. No, it can't be. I'm afraid so, yeah. She's living in London. Mm -hmm. What about this Sarah from the bank? Even Sarah herself, uh, she's together with the rest of them, they're all from Nigeria. Which means to say that this entire thing is a scam. Scam? That's right. The police will lie with the Nigerian authorities through Interpol and forward all information to them for their follow-up investigation. It was one of those often reported Nigerian scams, but in another form. Mary lost more than 97,000 pounds, or about 200,000 Singapore dollars, all just over three weeks. Her American boyfriend was from Nigeria, although he had claimed to be living in the UK. It was a romance turned nightmare. Mary is currently holding two jobs as she is determined to pay back every cent she had borrowed from her friends. We would like to advise internet users to adopt the following preventive measures. Exercise caution when dealing with unknown persons befriended through the internet. For example, never put yourself in a vulnerable position or give out personal details about yourself when interacting with other internet users. Do not remit 
transfer or give any money to unknown persons and inform the police immediately if anyone attempts to blackmail or threaten you. After the break, yet another common scam to watch out for.